Hey Fantastic You, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome, glad to have you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can be friends. Today we're going to make this beautiful flower card. This project is available under my profile, Seatone Creations in Design Space. You can also go into Projects and then the Cricut Community. And because it's a shared project, it will be available there. I'm also going to put a link to the project in the description of this video. So you could use this card for lots of different celebrations. Mother's Day, birthday, wedding, thinking of you, whatever you think the card's appropriate for. So we've got our main part of the card here. We've got our sentiment. So we've got it set up as a happy Mother's Day. And it's going to go right there. Now you can switch this to whatever you want. On the white part, it is just blue text attached to the white. So unattach, change the text to what you want, reattach. And then last part, we've got our flowers at the bottom. That's a lot of flowers. Now, these little ones here, each one you see is an individual flower. For the other four columns, each color in one row is an individual flower. So three parts make up one flower. I have grouped this column together and same for the other ones. And if you ungroup it, each individual color of three are attached. I recommend that you don't detach them. If you do reattach them, it will make your life easier when you're cutting this out, I'll show you shortly. As you can see, I am cutting everything out. I just wanted to stop and give you a couple tips and hopefully this will help you not have any issues cutting out this card or any other projects. So you can see I'm using the green mat. This is a Cricut mat. It's not actually intended for cardstock or paper. It's meant for HTV, iron-on, vinyl. However, this mat, I have used to the point and cleaned as well numerous times that it's no longer sticky enough for vinyl, but it's sticky enough for paper and cardstock. So I find that at this point, it's not as sticky as a brand new blue mat, but it's somewhat close. So here's a way to get a little bit of extra life out of a green mat if you want to. If you have a brayer, they work great on pressing the material down onto the mat. This is going to help prevent the blade from catching some of the cutout design. And because some of these parts of the flowers are so tiny and the petals are so delicate, these will be more prone to that happening. So hopefully this will help you out. So this one's all cut out. You can see that flower piece there. I did get a bit of blade drag on it. Uh, remember when I said in Design Space that I grouped the three parts of one flower together? Because I've done that, as long as you don't ungroup them, they're together when they cut. So let me bring this closer. So those three pieces, one flower. One flower, one flower. Those are the small ones, they're only one piece. One flower, one flower, one flower, one flower. So. When you're removing paper from a mat, you actually pull the mat away from the paper. And because these are so delicate, if you have a spatula, anything that looks like this, it's going to help you remove them properly. So you pull the mat up and you can see I can get the spatula in that one. Hopefully it's picking it up. So I hold it pretty close, get the spatula in there pinch the flower between just like that. And this one is the smallest one. So I'm going to put that one there because that's the biggest piece. Let's get the next one. It goes there. And there's the small one. So do that for all of them and then we'll get this all put together. 
So let's start putting these flowers together. These are the four bigger sizes. That's what we're gonna work on, the little itty bitty ones. Just keep those off to the side for now. I do recommend that you use some type of tacky glue that does remain flexible when it's dried. It will make shaping the flowers so much easier. So this part's pretty simple. You've got your three sizes of one flower. They're all in order. So take your biggest piece, middle piece. And just a small amount of glue. And center the middle piece best you can. You want to let that one dry just a little bit before you put on the smallest piece. So I find it easiest just to go through these two piles first and then start onto the next side. So that's what we're going to do. There's the first layer done. And I'm going to start with the very first one that I did. Let's get the top layer. And I'm doing it this way just to give the glue a chance to uh, tack up a little bit so you don't accidentally slide off the middle layer as you're attaching the top layer. So there, there's one flower completed. So work your way through all four sizes and we'll start on to the next step. All the flowers are glued together and they have dried. So there's a close up one so you can see how I did the layers. I kind of staggered them to give it a more natural look. But our next step that we need to do is turn our flat flower into a 3D flower. So I've got this tool here. It is an embossing ball tool. This is what I'm going to use on my flowers, but I got two other options there. But I'll show you with the ball tool first. So you can see there's a circle in the center there. You're just going to take the tool and go around kind of the outside of the circle. You're not pressing super hard, but you'll see it start to lift up. There we go. Could probably do a little bit more on this one. If one part's not popping up as much as others, just go over that area. We'll put that back down there and you can see that it's more of a 3D look. Now, if you don't have one of those, let's grab another one. This is the embossing tool for Cricut. It doesn't have a super pointy end, but you could use this for the exact same one. You just want to be gentle. You don't want to make your paper rip or anything like that. But just keep going around. And there, we've got a three dimensional flower. Now the last one is another Cricut tool. This is kind of a weeding tool, but right where it bends is soft enough that if you have this tool and it's the only one you have, you could use it to do the same as the embossing tool. Again, you want to be gentle, not too hard. You don't want to tear your paper. You're just going around the outside of that circle and there. Put all three together. So there you go. You can even do it with your small ones. You don't want to do too, too much just because these ones are going to kind of be covered a bit. So there you go. I'm going to do the rest of mine and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I've got all of my flowers embossed and I have started to put on my center of the flowers. I am using pearl bling stickers, uh, crystal bling stickers, and some glitter glue. So I'll give you a couple close-ups of these ones. So there's a pearl. Looks really nice on my silver glitter. 
It's the crystal. And then, I know this one's a little hard to see, but that's some glitter glue in there. So I'm gonna finish getting the rest of mine all done up and then we'll go on to the next step. Flowers are done. So let's start attaching the flowers to the front panel. They get attached to the smaller of the two rectangles. Now there is a score line on the very top rectangle. And that's just a reference line for you when you're attaching your flowers. So you can go over the line a little bit, but not by much. Now the more narrow side goes on the left and that's the side the flowers get attached. And if you double check with your sentiment, you can see that you've got some wiggle room. So the next part you don't have to do, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna attach a piece of ribbon along that score line. I'm gonna center the score line and the ribbon best I can. Now, if you're attaching ribbon to cardstock, I do recommend you use double-sided tape on the back that's going to be on the front. And then the parts that are gonna fold over, just use some tacky glue. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's start placing the flowers. Now, I do suggest you mock this up first. Uh, it will save you issues later on, like too many of the same color placed together, etc. Now, I also recommend that you put the littlest flower in the corners, just because the other sizes don't fit that well. You can go over the edge of the paper a little bit, and same with the score line or the middle of the ribbon. You just want to keep it consistent so it kind of retains that rectangle shape. So there's a general idea of kind of how to lay them down. Remember, you can go over the edges a bit. I got a bit of tweaking left to do on mine, so I'm gonna do that off camera, and then we'll start gluing them down. I do wanna point out when you start gluing, make sure that the little flowers kind of get glued down first, and then the four bigger sizes can be layered however you want them layered. There, I've got my flowers for the most part arranged where I want them. So next part is to glue the flowers down. So while the flowers are drying, we're gonna build the rest of the card. So here's our main part of the card here. I like to use double-sided tape when I'm attaching these types of pieces. And the Happy Mother's Day onto that piece. There we go. Now, these should be dry enough. We're gonna be very gentle. So there's the ribbon folded over and you can see some of the flowers kind of peeking over. I think that's pretty cute. Now we're gonna use some foam tape. All done. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that shimmer and glitter and bling. So pretty. Now, this is sized to fit a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter inch envelopes. You can buy envelope packs that size from Michaels. The paper cardstock for the flowers, I got at Michaels and it was the single sheets. So textured gray and navy blue, shimmer for both the light blues and the glitter cardstock for that one. And that's actually the smooth glitter cardstock. The bling stickers I got from Michaels as well. The main part of the card is 65 pound cardstock. And then I have done up another one. If you don't want to get all the specialty paper and bling, this one is done with all 65 pound 
solid color cardstock and I just used the glitter glue for the inside. Obviously did the same ribbon there, but it's got some nice sparkle to it. So again, this one you can use more what you have on hand if you wanna go all out and get some really fancy paper or if you already have super fancy paper, you can go that way. But thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Until next time.